More spooktacular tunes are coming up. Is that like a party? Great. Come on, gang. So do not fear. Scooby-Doo is here. Right here on MeTV Tunes. <laughs> 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 Silence! <laughs> For it is I, Nostalgia Ferrato, guardian of the Dark Gate, sentinel of the Sinister, and former Arthur Murray dance instructor. Gwen Dooley here, and who am I? Well, I'll keep you guessing, for I put the miss in mystery. And I'm Imp, the mischief-making minion from the Dungeon's Dungeon. This is a time filled with many questions. Why have we summoned you here? Why are we so looking forward to sharing our favorite Scooby-Doo Halloween cartoons with you? Why do birds suddenly appear every time you are near? Just like me, they long to be close to you. Bird Baccarat. A true genius. Because Halloween is the best time for hilarious hauntings, we have handpicked two classic Scooby-Doo episodes to enjoy with you today. In the first Halloween hassle at Dracula's Castle, Scooby and the gang win a contest and get invited to Dracula's Castle on Halloween night. Of course, there are a few bumps along the way. Our second cartoon, Sandy Duncan's Jekyll and Hyde, tells the terrifying tale of the March sisters, Meg, Joe, Beth, and Amy, and their delicate passage from childhood to womanhood, but not Robin Hood. You just described the plot of Little Women, not Sandy Duncan's Jekyll and Hyde. No, I didn't. You did. Gwen's right, Nasty. Meg, Joe, Beth, and Amy March are the lead characters in Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. Who also wrote Sandy Duncan's Jekyll and Hyde. You haven't seen Sandy Duncan's Jekyll and Hyde, have you? Oh, I have seen it five, maybe eight times. Nasty. Okay, I have not seen it. You know why? Hmm. It is too scary. What is it that scares you so much? Oh, it's that Mr. Hyde fella. He gives me the jeebie-heebies. <laughs> Mr. Hyde? Why does he scare you so much? It's just the way he looks. His pale, lifeless skin. His distant, deep-set eyes. His pointed, animal-like fangs. <laughs> I guess that would be hard to go through life and death looking that way. Oh, I can't even imagine. When the idea of Scooby-Doo was first pitched to CBS in 1968, Fred Silverman, the man in charge of daytime programming for the network, saw the show as a cross between the I Love a Mystery radio serials of the 1940s, the characters from Archie comic books, and the 1960s television series, The Many Loves of Dobie Gillis. The original title of the show was The Mysterious Five, which CBS wasn't exactly thrilled with, and changed it to a much more cartoonish who's s -s -s scared There was much debate over what kind of dog the gang should have. Should he be a large, cowardly dog, or maybe a small, feisty dog? He was originally drawn up to be a large sheepdog, like Hot Dog from the Archies. But cooler heads prevailed, and Scooby-Doo was changed into a Great Dane. <laughs> Great Dane is kind of a lot. Maybe a very good Dane? <laughs> Did you know that Scooby-Doo wasn't Scooby's original name? It's true. Can you guess what it was? Uh, Scooby-Don't. Uh, Warren G. Harding. No, too much. Uh, just Harding. No, Scooby-Doo's original name was too much. Oh, they didn't give him a name? What a crazy time! They also changed the names of all of Scooby's human friends. Daphne was originally going to be called Kelly, a Shaggy was slated to be called WW, a Velma was originally Linda, and Fred was supposed to be Jeff, which became Ronnie and was changed to Fred by Fred Silverman, go figure. There are so many cartoon characters named Fred. You've got Freddy from Scooby-Doo, you've got Fred Flintstone. Uh, nasty. That's only two. Oh, right. Um, 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 Grape Ape, uh, Peppermint Paddy, uh, Megilla Gorilla. None of their names are Fred. Oh, I guess you know everything, huh? Well, I may not know everything, but I do know that Scooby's famous line, Scooby Dooby Doo, comes from Frank Sinatra's scat singing at the end of Strangers in the Night, when he famously croons Dooby Dooby Doo. And now it's time for our first Halloween classic, a Halloween hassle at Dracula's Castle. 
So Frank Sinatra is Scooby-Doo. Just watch. We'll be right back with more Scooby-Doo after these. Wait for me, Scooby! We'll be back with more spooky. Huh? <clears throat> Scooby-Doo! with the Sven Squad, and we're watching a Scooby-Doo's A Halloween Hassle at Dracula's Castle. You like it so far? Yeah, 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 yeah! <laughs> Good. You know, those monsters in our film gave me the idea to have our very own Halloween party in the dungeon. Just the season, am I right? And Nasty! <laughs> oh, you call? How did you boys get here so fast? Well, we were just waiting off frame until you said our names, then we came in. Right. Squad, we are gonna have our very own Halloween party right here in the dungeon. Oh, great Peter Sellers. That sounds like fun. More like Peter Dungeon, if you ask me. <laughs> so, Nasty, I'm gonna need you to send out Batmail and RIP invitations to all our ghoul and monster friends. <gasps> Even my mother? Uh, is she a monster? To some. Okay, well, you get on that and don't forget anyone, okay? All right. <laughs> and you, Imp. Yes. Calm down. Yes. I need you to get me decorations, streamers, pumpkins, and these ingredients for my special recipe. <gasps> Ooh, Gwen's goulash. Sounds deliciously disgusting. I'm on it. <laughs> Tonight is Halloween night. Let's set the mood, shall we? Some lightning. A little howl. Ooh. To set the mood just right. Bring me that candy corn and those thunderstorms. It's a Halloween party tonight. <laughs> <laughs> a holiday filled with ghosts and frights. Zombies wake on this hollow's night. Watching witches fly around on brooms to hear the sound. Or two, and I'm the ghoul who knows what to do. Ask me anything about a trick or treat, because in the underworld I run these streets. Ask me anything, anything you got. Should I call my crazy ex? Oh, nasty, I think not. I'm going to the mall, oh, nasty. Make some calls. Go on and hurry, because I'm having Halloween withdrawals. I need pumpkins, spice, and everything. Not nice. Come celebrate with me to make it just. I get everything ready. <laughs> we'll be right back with more Scooby Doo after these. Wait for me, Scooby! We'll be back with more spooky. Huh? <clears throat> Scooby Doo! Looks like the party that Scooby, Shaggy, and Scrappy are having is a real smash! And mine's gonna be too if I don't get the party decor and ingredients that Gwen asked for. You know, I hear her special goulash has a lot of bite. <laughs> ah, no wonder. The recipe calls for a dash of musk deer. You know who would have the best snoot for sniffing out these supplies? My boulder buddy, Marbles! 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 Ah, I've lost my marbles again. <gasps> All right, he always comes when I... Marbles! <laughs> All right, Marbles, you're the one dungeon dweller who never lets me down. I'm sure you've heard Gwen Gooley is cooking up her famous goulash. Burp, burp. Well, I guess you're right. Sometimes it can be a bit on the bland side if she uses stucco instead of asbestos in the broth. Burp. That's right, too, Marbles. She's doing as best as she can. <laughs> Anyway, Gwen's asked me to find some of the ingredients. Uh, you think you can help out a fellow winged friend and fetch these for me? Burp, burp. Thanks, pal. It's like I always say, if you want something done right, Imp, don't do it yourself. There you go. <laughs> oh, no! What was I thinking? Marbles can't read! Marbles, Marbles, wait! And he's 
gone. <sighs> okay, stay, stay calm, Iggy. What else did Gwen need? Oh yes, streamers. That's right. Let me just check my boxes of bric-a-brac for some streamers. <laughs> but screamers. Oh, maybe I've got some streamers in my super secret stash of stuff. Wow. No luck, but I did find my lost copy of Seance in a Sock, the spirited stalking travel game. Wow, I think we're already starting to communicate with the other side. Maybe this hosiery is just hot. Hey, Gwenguli, weren't you looking for a pumpkin? Yeah, why? Because there goes the real melon head right now. <laughs> a nice use of the evil laugh to get Imp's pulse percolating. Did you know that Scooby-Doo was the first Saturday morning cartoon to feature a laugh track? No kidding, a laugh track is my favorite sleep sound. <laughs> oh, that's it, poof, I'm out. He's out. We'll be right back with more Scooby-Doo after these. Wait for me, Scooby! We'll be back with more spooky. Huh? <clears throat> Scooby-Doo! Ah, welcome back, boys and ghouls. Good one, Nasty. Very inventive. Thank you, Gwengoli. It is time now for one of my favorite segments. Would you rather? I will give you the choice between two horrible circumstances, and you must pick the one that you would most endure. <laughs> but I must warn you, they are both so, so, so horrible. The trick is to pick the option that you think you can survive, but no one ever does. <laughs> are you ready? I'm ready! <sighs> yes, go ahead. Imp! Would you rather be put in a box filled with cockroaches, hungry cockroaches, and the box is slowly lowered into the ground six feet deep, 811 feet deep. As you are lowered deeper and deeper into the total darkness, there is nothing but pitch black. And of course, the cockroaches. And then men with shovels come and they fill the hole with soil and you cannot get out. Or would you rather eat a carrot? I, I'm sorry, eat a carrot? Yes, a big carrot. Well, uh, huh, I think I would eat the carrot. Ah! It's just a carrot, I mean, what am I missing? Oh, you are a gluten for punishment imp. Gwenguli, huh. the turn is yours. Oh boy, can't wait. Would you rather wake up to find out that you have been entangled in a giant spider web? A spider web made of razor sharp silk and battery acid. Oh, you twist and you turn, trying to break free, but you cannot. You hear the pathetic screams of the spider's previous victims below you. They scream a song of hopelessness and despair. And then you hear the gnawing sound. No, 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 no. The spider's drawing closer. She draws closer and closer. She's coming for you, Gwenguli, coming to devour you. Or would you rather go for a pony ride? The choice is yours. I'm gonna have to go with Pony Ride. Ah! The Pony Ride is not good. Nasty, Nasty, please stop screaming. In 1972, Scooby-Doo, Where Are You? expanded to a full hour and had its title changed to the new Scooby-Doo movies. The most evident change in the format was that Scooby and his friends were now joined in each episode by real or fictitious guest stars to help them solve their mysteries. Everyone from Jonathan Winters to the Harlem Globetrotters to Sandy Duncan made guest appearances. Kids love Sandy Duncan. One of the most memorable episodes was when Scooby-Doo met Sandy Duncan. Hey, Nasty, would you rather watch Sandy Duncan's Jekyll and Hyde or Scooby-Doo meets the Addams Family? Sandy Duncan's Jekyll and Hyde. Well, here it is now. Oh, she was so enchanting in Broadway's Peter Pan. <laughs> We'll be right back with more Scooby-Doo after these. Wait for me, Scooby! We'll be back with more spooky. Huh? <clears throat> Scooby-Doo! 
You're watching the Scooby-Doo Sunday special hosted by House of Spenguli. But it isn't. Look! It's time for some cadavers who cook with your host, Wen Guli. <laughs> Hello there, I'm Wen Guli, and you are just in the dead of time to learn how to make my very own Gwen's goulash for the Halloween party. <laughs> Thank you. Do you know that Hungarians are the first ones to attempt a goulash? Probably because they were hungry. <laughs> Whatever. This is gonna be a big batch. I'm gonna need some help, so please welcome the vamp who puts the bad in Dingbat, Nasty, to the stage. Hello, hello, beautiful audience. So, Nasty, you're gonna be my sous chef for today. Sound good? Well, my name isn't Sue, but uh, okay. Well, this is gonna be a very long day. Okay, first step is the meat. Some prefer red meat or chicken, but I went with cracked meat, for it's in season, or at least will be. <laughs> Nasty, uh, can you open up the pot in the back and please tenderize the kraken while I go ahead and start boiling the water? Of course, gently and tenderly. <laughs> Great, while Nasty is doing that, I'm gonna add some ingredients to the mix while we're boiling the water. First, half a cup of sea salt. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, let's see, oh, one cup of witch's brew. You can get this at your local Trader Poe's in the Nevermore Isles, two teaspoons of... That, okay, and then two teaspoons of vampire vein to give it that real bite, you know? Oh, oh good, you're back. Is the crack in tender? It is now. Why are you sweating? Uh, no reason. <laughs> okay, well, make sure your water is at 450 degrees before putting in your crack in. <laughs> there. Nastia, can you hand me that jar? Oh, yes, of course I can. It says in the recipe, one dollop of banshee scream, so here you go. <laughs> ah, food from my ears. Yeah. And last, just a hint of pepper. Oh, I like that pen. <laughs> what the? <coughs> and where are you? Right here. How, how did you? Never mind. What kind of pepper did you get? The normal kind. Uh, see? Whoa, that smells like gunpowder. You bought gunpowder instead of pepper? Uh, to be honest, they do kind of look the same. I mean, anyone could make this mistake. You? Hush. And why would you do this? Gwen, I swear on Nasty's not life. Whoa, hey now. I did not buy that when you sent me out for ingredients. Well, if not you, then who did? <laughs> of lightning, very, very frightening. Galileo, Galileo? What was that? More like, who was that? Imp? Nasty? I think someone's trying to ruin our Halloween party. Uh, well, let's cut back to Scooby and the gang with Sandy Duncan while we try to solve our own mystery. Agreed. Something definitely is fishy around here. Yeah, it's the goulash. It is. We'll be right back with more Scooby-Doo after these. Wait for me, Scooby! We'll back with more spooky. Huh? <clears throat> Scooby-Doo! That Scooby plot thickens like the broth of my goulash. <laughs> but not like the level of the decorations. It was supposed to be hanged for the party. I'm gonna hang him from his toes. Don't threaten me with a good time. How did you? Never mind. Where are my party decorations? I looked and looked and it was a scream. Ah! Ice cream? Hold on a second, has the party started already? Obviously not. Imp has failed to deliver the decor. I can't seem to find any party supplies in the dungeon. Even worse, all of our annual holiday decorations have been destroyed. You remember Frostbite, our vampire slash snowman lawn inflatable? Punctured. All of our petrified poinsettias? Petalless. Curious. This decor disruption, plus the mix up with the gunpowder from my goulash, something very fishy is going on here. Are we sure it is not the soup? Seriously, Gwen, I tried. There's only one explanation the dungeon is haunted. <gasps> the dungeon is inhabited by spooky weirdos. That's it. I'm moving. 
I suggest we set a trap. Oh, I've got a roll of human-sized flypaper from Costco. Cute, but I suggest we use the old box of embarium method. That's thinking outside of the box. <laughs> Thanks. If you want to catch a restless spirit, you need to give them a place of rest. Now, ghosts are drawn to sanctified <laughs> soil, like the stuff you find at a cemetery or church. Oh, how about I lend you a handful of the dust bunnies I collected while I was on tour with Jesus Christ Superstar? That should do the trick. Now we need a box, and it's got to be something big, like, um... Sanguli's coffin! After we fill the coffin with soil, we'll leave the coffin open just a smidge so the ghost can creep in. Once inside, it'll trip its hair trigger. The door of the coffin will slam shut, and the ghost will be trapped. So you're not upset about the lack of decor anymore? Are you kidding? We're gonna catch ourselves the most spine-tingling party display ever. It'll be a scream. <laughs> okay, okay, I, even I've had enough of that gag and that's saying something. Oh, very true, yes, very definitely. Yes, I've heard absolutely. it before. Wait, we can't use Uncle Sven's coffin. I set a trap of itching powder inside all the crevices and cracks of Uncle Sven's coffin just this morning. Oh, crack scratch fever, huh? Hmm, I will go check on the goulash. Are you sure imp doesn't stand for ignoramus making problems? I don't think so. <laughs> Look, you little fiend. Maybe you didn't mess with the recipe mix-up, and you didn't drop the decor, but you foiled my formula to catch the specter, so you better trap and catch that ghost. And I better get to warming up my pottery wheel. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> That's a reference from the movie Ghost. All right, Iggy, you got this. You put the chief in mischief. Aha! <laughs> That's using the old melon. <laughs> we'll be right back with more Scooby-Doo after these. Wait for me, Scooby! We'll be back with more spooky. Huh? <clears throat> Scooby-Doo! Folks, it's me, Sven Tooney, the Red Tuner of Terror. And me, Nostalgia Ferrato, the Harbinger of Death, the Keeper of the Dark Souls, and the official body waxer of Mr. Lou Ferrigno. Hey, Nasty, what do you think of parallel dimensions? Well, if it's anything like parallel parking, I don't like it. You know how hard it is to back into a space while holding a candelabra? <laughs> yeah, I bet there are a lot of things you find challenging. Parking, finding a dentist, Getting earmuffs that fit. <laughs> so true, so true. But seriously, I kind of like parallel dimensions. Why? Don't you? Eh, I don't know if I believe in them. Really? Yeah, I mean, come on. An upside down dimension, dimension that mirrors our world, but it's filled with monsters and horrors? I don't know. I, I guess, guess stranger, stranger things, things have happened. Well, I think they are the bee's pajamas, the cat's knees, if you will. Uh, you got those two mixed. You know what? Never mind. Anyways, my buddy Trevor gave me this here crystal ball, and he says it's a window into the scariest parallel dimension there's ever been. Well, what are we waiting for, Sventuni? Let's go through this magical portal and find this alternative world. <laughs> yeah, let's see what we got. Well, uh, wherever we are, this is the scariest and most depressing dungeon I've ever been in. Oh, uh, speaking of scary, Sventuni, my clothes! What are these hideous dressings I'm in, Sventuni? Look, there's a hood attached to a jacket, and I'm wearing a child's ball cap. What, am I an orphan during Great Depression? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I kind of like my look. I mean, uh, a T-shirt and no pants? Yeah, it's like, yeah, business on top and then party below deck. <laughs> oh, and uh, Nasty, if you think your get-up is scary, pick up that mirror and check out your mug. Do I really want to do this? Yeah. All right. Ah! What cruel demon has punished me with this monstrosity of a face? It's hideous! <sighs> Where are my fangs? Oh, my mouth is full of infant teeth. Oh, and my ears. What am I, a titmouse? Look at this. Who could hear with these lobes? And the patchy stubble. It looks like a snowplow ran over my face with a mixture of gray, dirty snow. How oh, this mirror has not cracked is beyond me. <laughs> well, I don't know. I think my face looks pretty good. I mean, it's so fresh and so clean, clean. <laughs> Guess there's nothing that can make me ugly. 
It's good to know that the meal ticket looks handsome in any world. Then, Tony, we must leave this dimension at once. I can't bear another second here. <laughs> hey, if you want to leave, cool with me. I mean, this tank smells like wet farts and old donuts. <laughs> We're back with this new. Thank you so much, Christopher. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Candelabra. Mm -hmm. You know how I do that? I put my arms around my shoulders and pretend it's two people. Okay, Nasty, uh, that's enough. You're kind of freaking us out. Hello, disturbingly dark region right around my mouth and eyes. <laughs> you know what, folks? Let's just go to a commercial. We'll be right back with more Scooby-Doo after these. Wait for me, Scooby! We'll back with more spooky. Huh? <clears throat> Scooby-Doo. You're watching the Scooby-Doo Sunday Special, hosted by House of Spanguli. <laughs> now that the mystery is solved for Scooby and the gang, it's time to head to commercials. The Spence Squad will be right back. OK, Gwen, the trap is all set. Great, we are gonna catch that phantom party pooper right in the act. Go over the plan again for me. Mm, with pleasure. First, you will set a jack-o'-lantern on the table that is now rigged with a sensor device that when touched or moved will set off a very annoying alarm. How annoying? Uh, something like this. <clears throat> oh, stop, okay, agreed. <laughs> Very annoying. What next? All right, so when you set the pumpkin or bait on the table, you will then say these lines to entice the phantom into thinking that this is the most important item to the Halloween party. Oh boy, here is the most important item to the Halloween party. I hope no one steals it. A little on the nose, don't you think? Well, if you acted it better. I act like I like you, continue. Once you uh, deliver your acting... Great acting. <clears throat> that's subjective. Nasty and I will be standing by with the net trap knitted by Nasty's toenails. <laughs> you should see them like scissors. I didn't need to hear that. But once the alarm is triggered, you both will then let go of the net, catching the phantom right on the spot. Yes! Nasty is already standing by. <laughs> uh, uh, over here, Nasty. Oh, ready! <sighs> okay, let's get into positions. <laughs> <clears throat> oh boy, here it is. The most important item to the Halloween party. Uh, I thought you said she was a good actress. Where are the tomatoes when you need them? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I sure hope no one steals it. Let's see who the party pooper really is. <laughs> Spag Tooney! Watch up, my dudes. Wait, something is rotten in Dunkirk. This can't be Sven Tooney. He was just with me a couple of minutes ago. Check his young, impressive Sam Elliott looking mustache for fraud. <laughs> Cohen! Oh, more like a chicken. Oh, man. I would have gotten away with it, too, if it wasn't for you meddling, uh, not kids. Erwin, why would you do this? Well, it appears my invitation was lost in the mail. Clearly, I'm not wanted. Of course you were invited. Everyone was invited, weren't they, Nasty? Uh, yes. The ones who don't live nearby, they got bat mail. And the ones that do? Well, I honestly thought they would hear through word of mouth. You can't keep a secret in this place. <laughs> the walls, they talk. Shh, listen. In plays with rubber chickens like dolls when everyone's asleep. They lie! So I was invited. Gee, I should have known you'd prefer chicken over fish. Could you guys ever forgive me? Of course, Carwin. Life is too short to carry hard feelings. I would know if I could feel. <laughs> now let's get you out of that trap and you can help us finish decorations and fix things you almost ruined, starting with my goulash. We'll be right back with more Scooby-Doo after these. Wait for me, Scooby! We'll back with more spooky. Huh? <clears throat> Scooby-Doo. Up next is my favorite part. You mean when Sandy Duncan sings and dances? Oh, don't forget the acting. A real triple threat, that one. Nope, it's when I start the two of you arguing again. <laughs> now, let's get back to the ending of the new Scooby-Doo Mysteries, Sandy Duncan's Jekyll and Hyde.
Well, Halloween sure has lived up to its reputation once again. So many tricks and treats. Gotta hand it to you, Gwen. This goulash lives up to its rep as well. Yes, the gunpowder gives you the real kick. Ooh, thanks, fellas. Thanks for helping me get this place whipped into party mode after all of Kerwin's foul play. <laughs> Did we ever find out where he hid all of our decor and doodads? <laughs> On second thought, I don't think I want to know. Mm, Gwen, this too may be true, but this Halloween party is a dud. What do you talk? Well, for starters, I don't see the bin for Bob and for Jackfruit. Nor do I see the hammer and nails for pin the femur on the phantom. And I am most disappointed to not see a broomstick. Uh, for the witches? No, 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 for the limbo. I'm the undefeated champion at the local Knights of Colombo. 600 years running! After all that time, they haven't gotten suspicious? <laughs> I have an extensive collection of Hawaiian print shirts. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got to get dressed before our guests get here. Oh, he's right. Our creepy crew of company should start clawing to get in here any minute now. Leave it to monsters to lurch in late. <laughs> What is that? It's the party invitations. <gasps> They're all marked return to sender. Nasty! <gasps> Did someone invite the boogie monster? That's good. Boogie monster. <laughs> what, would you prefer that I wear a paisley romper? Nasty, all the bat mail got returned. You dingbat, it looks like you didn't even put any postages on them. Oops! <laughs> I must have failed to mention I've never sent bat mail before. I've only used snail mail, but these invitations were too big for my snails. <laughs> Licking the glue part was fun, though. All right, well, keep my resume on file for that job in the future, huh? I'm gonna keep your death certificate on file. Uh, mama, mama, hold up, hold up. You know what? We don't need a bunch of monsters mashing around this place to have a good time. We've got all the storm and fang any Halloween party needs. Gwen, you the theremin. Well, when you... Put it like that. <laughs> Happy Halloween, everyone. Happy Halloween! Oh, this has a good beat, and it's easy to goulash, too. <laughs> <laughs>